Okay, hi folks. I thought I would show you today how I make um, my baskets. Now, there's a couple different kinds of baskets that I make, and right now we're just going to focus on the. Um, we're going to focus on the. Uh, what time is it? On the um, square baskets instead of the round ones. Uh, the round ones require a different kind of product, uh, and I'm, I'm just not in the mood to deal with that right now. Um, I prefer, uh, if I'm doing a round one, I prefer to use a base, because um, I really don't like doing the whole, that star-shaped bottom, I, I just don't like that. Um, but, also, I thought I would go through my math that I use to make the baskets, it helps me. Um, and for whatever reason, one of the tools I need, I can't seem to locate, but that's okay, it's okay. Um, I'll find it later and I'll show it to you in a, another part of this video. Um, to start with, the plan is to make a 7 by 9 inch basket for the table. Um, it's going to hold, I don't know, uh, napkins or rolls or something, I don't know. Just something I'd like to have. So, since my bas my the plan for my basket is for it to be uh, 7 by 9 by 5 inches tall. Um, and I have, to, so I have to draw things out for myself to understand. Um, I'm going to be cutting my reeds. Um, that's going to be length and wide. Um, I'm going to have to cut them, and the the equation I use is I take the length that I want plus the height that, that I want times 2. So if I want it 5 inches, I have to multiply the 5 by 2. If I want it 6 inches, it would be 6 times 2 plus 9, or um, if I wanted it, you know, wh whatever it is. Whatever the width is, or however tall it's going to be, times 2, because you need it that tall on both you know, the right and left sides, um, plus the length, and then I add six. That way, when I'm folding over my pieces at the top, I've got three inches on all sides to work with. So, for the length that I'm going to need, I'm going to need to cut them 25 inches long, because nine plus five times two plus six is 25. Okay? Because 10, 19, plus 6 is 25. Same thing for the uh, for the width of the box uh, basket. My basket is going to be 7 inches wide. So I need them to be at least 7 inches wide in the center, you know, in the middle piece. Plus it's going to be 5 inches tall, so I need 5 times 2 plus 6 so that I have fold over, you know, 3 inches of fold over at the top. So that means I need my width pieces to be 23 inches because 5 times 2 is 10, plus 7 is 17, plus 6 is 23, if I've done my math right. Um, because they're half inches, and we're going to have one of these pieces going that way and one going this way, that space will equal um, 1 inch. So I don't have to do a whole lot of math, I just need um, half of one of these for every inch. Um, because the other direction is going to make up for the other part of the half. It'll make sense in a minute, don't worry. So I'm going to need seven pieces, at least seven pieces, at 25 inches, and I'm going to need at least nine pieces at 23, I think. Let's see. Other way around. Other way around. Because I need it nine inches long, so yeah. So I'm going to need nine pieces at 25, and I'm going to need seven pieces, because I put these into the wrong this, these two should be flipped. So I'm going to need nine inches, nine of them at 25 inches, and nine, or seven of them at 23 inches. So just swap these two, sorry. So, and then the halfway points are going to matter. For the 25 inch long pieces, the halfway points are going to be um, 12 and a half inches, and the halfway point for the 23 inch long pieces is going to be 11 and a half. So, that's my math. And now we got that out of the way because that's the worst part of it. I'll show you uh, what you're going to need to actually make it. Um, some people use round reed, and I like to use baby grass. Um, it's seagrass, baby seagrass. Um, I like to use this for a lot of my baskets just because I really like the look. I, I like it a lot. So that's going to go into the basket on the um, lock row, and I'll explain what a lock row is later when we get to it. Um, my uh, the base of the basket, the reeds that I need to cut that I explained, are going to be um, 
this half inch flat reed and it's called flat reed because it's I don't know if you can see that it's flat it's not rounded or anything the rounded reeds let me show you um, let's see here is some quarter inch uh, half round and it's half round because it's a circle cut in half I don't know if you can see that maybe if I do it this way you can see they're round and cut in half so that's a half round um, then there's um, this is oval reed I believe and it's kind of rounded on one side and flat on the other but it's not anywhere near as rounded as the other ones I'm going to use some of this as well um, and this is quarter inch oval, flat oval um, and let's see I'm going to I mean there's all kinds of other stuff like for instance this this is three quarter inch half round and this will probably illustrate my point a little bit better so you can see how it's rounded on one side and flat on the other so that's what half round is um, let's see and I think that's all I'm going to need as far as the actual material for the basket I've got some dyeing right now so that I can uh, use it uh, for decoration and then you're going to need clothes pins or these bulldog clips, binder clips, whatever they're called. Um, d if you want to decorate it, get your you're going to need your decoration to cut the reeds. I prefer my garden um, pruners, but you know garden scissors will work too. And then you're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers uh, for bending stuff. So anyway. Um, that's the supply list plus you're going to need water and a um, I've got a dish pan let me show you one of those big kitchen dish pan things here it is um, I use the big um, 18 quart uh, Sterilite uh, dish pans um, for soaking my reeds in. Soaking is imperative or else it won't it's not going to uh, act right. So I'm going to cut this using the, sciz the uh, garden scissors. Don't try to use your dress making shears. Um, and then it's going to go into here just so that it can uh, soak in hot or I mild medium temperature water. doesn't need to be hot but I'm going to cut my pieces, they'll be soaking, and when I come back I'll show you how to lay it all out and um, get it started. Okay, so we've done the long pieces, the ones that are 25 inches long. Now we need to do the ones that are 23. I took one of them and I marked a middle, and that we're going to kind of line up right here, but we don't need to worry about that one right now. So we've got seven of them, uh, so we're going to take three of them, and put them in, then we're going to put our middle one in, and then we're going to put the other three. So, right now we know that our center is here. So I'm going to start by going, um, let's see, uh, we're going to just do the basic weaving over, under, over, under, over, under. We're not going to worry about moving things around right this second, just kind of so that we have a basic over, under, over, under. And we're going to try to center this as much as possible the um, piece that we're just putting in. Um, it's not going to be perfect and we're going to be moving things around later on to make it perfect. Um, there we go. So I start from the center and work my way up. It seems to work best for me. So. slide that down towards the first one. I'm not going to worry about getting perfection here. Oh 
a blender. Put in this one. And once you've got a couple rows on, you can. Um, I had a ruler at the end, just kind of holding everything flat so that you'd be able to see it better. Um, but some people use what's called a uh, well, it's not called, but it, some people use a weight to help with that. And um, some people just use, like I do, a ruler and some soup cans, whatever. It, it all works. So. And then our middle piece has the mark on it. And that one is going to go under this one to mark our middle. And it's just under, over, under, over, under, over. But we're going to, with this one, we're going to be particular about where the uh, center is and make sure that it sets right on, or right underneath the uh, mark here. Okay. And that'll tell you how far in you need to push your ends. So that we know that this one needs to come forward. And this one. And this one. Let's sketch that just a little bit more. Okay. And so we know that this one, or this long one here, is centered. So we need to pull down these ones to meet. This one needs to be pushed up a little bit. This one needs to be pulled down a little bit. And these ones that are twisting sideways, you can just kind of bump them around a little bit just to make them match again. So this one will straighten up here in a minute. And we're going around and straighten it up. We're just going to kind of check it. See, it's six inches here, so no we know that we can move a couple pieces out this way and this way because we want it seven inches wide. Three, four. Remember, you're putting your good sides up, or good sides down. I'm going to sit down a read somewhere. I've got to find that read I sit down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need one more. Okay, well, it looks like I set it down somewhere, so I'm going to have to cut another one, get it wet, and show you. Let's see. All right, let's go this way. Possible cats took off with it, too. throw that in the water while I'm working on this. Okay, so with the exception of the last piece that I need to put right here that's soaking now, um, we need to check on the bottom and see if it's the size we want. I like this kind of loose, airy look where it's going to be, you know, not for anything that's going to fall out or anything, so. so it's just going to be for rolls, so it can be wide. But you see how these two are very close together and these two are very close together? We're going to move everything out just a little bit. Um, and since it's going to be
Hmm. We're just going to move everything evenly forward, making sure that we've got at least five inches, or at least eight inches, rather, to work with on either side. So, there we go. That's as far out as that one can go. This one can go. Right? Two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be seven inches, and this is going to be nine inches. And we still have a little bit to go yet. these out. This might just end up 7 by 5 because I may have done my math wrong. And there goes my dog growling. Cause she's so tough. There's construction going on outside, and she just does not like machines. I think she thinks that they're growling at her. I don't know. It's be nice and loose. And I think it's going to end up being 5 by 7 just because of the way things are laying out. And that's okay, because that'll, that'll work too. Now let's make sure it's even. That's 5 inches five inches. We still have one more piece to put in there. In fact, it should be. Well, no. Yeah, it is. Let me find out where the... Okay. Sometimes the size doesn't matter so much as having it even. It'll all work out in the end. It'll be fine in the end. So this is seven and a half inches. Not seven and a half inches. This is six and six. So I kind of like that. And you see we've got a nice open, so if there's bread in there, it's not going to get too humid at the bottom. It'll work out just fine. So instead of doing seven by nine, I've got six and a half by um, what is it? Six by seven and a half, so just a little bit shy of what I wanted, and that's okay. Perfection is not anything that I do. So, here we go. Now, oh, please excuse the dogs. Hunter, that's enough. I have no idea what they're barking at. So, next, what we're going to do is we are going to, um, do some lashing, and this is going to be called locking, uh, locking the reed. At least that's what I've always heard it. You know, I've always grown up with it being called is locking the reed. Um, maybe not even grown up because it was closer to adulthood that I learned how to do this. But so what you're going to do is get at least as much as you need to go around two and a half or three times. And what I mean go around is go around here two and a half or three times. So I'm just going to pull myself out some of the baby reed or baby seagrass. And we're going to put this to um, soak in water too. And we'll go around eh, at least that much. So, and then give yourself a little bit extra just so that you've got tails to work with. I'm going to cut it. And put this in the water too. 
Oh, goodness. While that's soaking in the water for a minute, we are going to take our, um, what are these? These are clothespins. And we're going to pin the corners just so that the corners don't move while I'm moving it around. Okay. So let me see if I can show you this a little bit of what we're looking at now. Um, it's pretty evenly spaced. Not perfect, but pretty even. Um, and it's more or less, more or less the size I wanted. Um, it's just about a half an inch, to a half an inch or so smaller than what I wanted, and that's okay. Um, the end result will still be a piece that uh, that I can use for the table. Okay, so this is our seagrass, and it's soaked a little bit. I'm going to find the middle, and we're going to pinch with the, um, we're going to pinch the middle with the, uh, but, uh, these aren't vice grips, what are they called? Hunter! These are called needle nose pliers. We're going to pinch it, and that'll allow us to make a nice bend without um, it cracking. We're going to find the center one. It doesn't matter which side, just the center one. And lay our loop from that here. up and out of the way. Huh. Then, now that we've got one coming up and one going under, the one that is up, the one that is up on top, we're going to go under. The one that is up on top, we're going to go under. Nice and tight. The one that is up on, oops, the one that is up on top this time. It's under, and push it up against your uh, previous rail. The one that is coming up on top from the last one, you put under. Same thing going around the corner. Whichever one was the top one for the last row, you put underneath this row. I hope that makes sense. And then you pin it in that corner again. And just keep going. Which one's up on top last time goes under this time. If it starts um, drying out on you, you can mist it. Make sure that your table is going to be able to handle the water or your lap or whatever. So this one was up on top last time. It goes under. I'm trying to slow down so that you can see what I'm doing because normally I can just keep going. This one was up on top last time, so it's going to go under. because I'm trying to hold it flat so that I don't uh, confuse anybody either. Okay, so we're at the corner. Switch it again. Whichever one was up on top now goes underneath. You see? And you follow that all the way around. Under, over, under, over, under, over. Now some people do it with round reed. Um, some people do it with yarn, some people do it with twine, um, some people do it with, gosh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do this piece with. Whatever you want and whatever you think will be the most decorative to your piece. And I do this 
slightly different when I do my round ones just because I have a, pref a different preference when I'm going around and I'm using the bases. Okay, so you just keep under, over, under, over and that's going to make your um, base and it's not going to let these ones slide that way and it's going to give something to fold against when you're folding the next part when you're doing the next part. So I'm going to stop the video now and um, since I think you've kind of got the idea I'm going to keep going until I've oops, these are all tangled together now until I've gotten to the end and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, bye for now. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to continue going around using this method. Um, and for a long time I thought that this was an exclusive method that my mom taught me, you know, that it was, but it turns out a lot of people use it, so. Anyway, um, you've done the lock row, and I've tucked the ends under the loops like this one. This loop, I've tucked the ends under those. So that they're locked in and then I trimmed it. So then you go around the outside and you lift these bending against the lock row so that your edge is right there. And you do this all the way around. If it starts cracking, make sure that you've sprayed your ends. When you get to right here, hold on. You sometimes you might have to use your thumb to hold it down so that it bends right. But just keep doing keep bending. When you get to a corner, um, bring your corners up. That way it's out of your way. And that helps reinforce the bend on the corners too. So just keep bending. You might have to use your fingers to help the bend. You don't need to bend it totally in half, but you need to bend it um, so that it starts um, basically what you're doing is scoring it so that it goes the direction it's supposed to. Here, later. Can you guys turn down the TV a little bit? So that it'll go the direction it's supposed to go as you keep going. And once you get some height on your sides when you're weaving, it'll help the um, shape of the basket too. So the easier to help it shape. I mean, I'm just had to get my attention. Just make sure that the surface you're working on can handle being sprayed with water. Don't do this to a fine piece of um, you know, heirloom furniture or anything. Or you can do this outside on a open ta you know, like a picnic table or whatever. But my table can handle it. There we go. Bend, bend, bend. And that's how to start the upward swing, or the upward growth of a basket. Then, um, what you're going to do is, I've got some more reed sitting in water. So you grab a piece of reed. Um, for this one, I'm going to use uh, more flat reed in the half inch width but you could use just about anything you wanted for this part. No fighting, guys. Um, you could use just about any size you wanted here. And whatever size you choose um, is going to help you with your design, overall design. So let me put this out of, whoops, let me put this out of the way. And we'll get started going around. <coughs> so I like to, since I ended over here with the, um, uh, lock read. I'm going to go start on the other side. Okay? That way I've got, you know, not all my, I don't like all my edges together. And what you're going to do is start in the middle of this piece. Actually, you're going to start in the middle of the outside. 
so I make sure that it's like three quarters or so um, across the reed and just start going around and you're going to start trying to pull it up because of your corner pieces that's going to help start standing it up and see how I don't know if you can see that yet see how I'm starting it so that it's on this on the outside of this reed we're going to be covering it over so um, right now that's fine and then just start going over under over under the entire way around and once I've done that um, we will come back and I will show you how to clip that and move on to the next row okay so just over under over under over under each um, read as you go across with that I hope that makes sense and as you go just tuck it down so that it goes to the bottom of your basket <coughs> to the bottom of your basket okay so I'll show you once we get back to the spot that I started at I'll show you what to do next okay so I'm just about finished the third row and um, I'm going to be moving on to um, my decorative rows and um, so I'd start the camera again and all I'm doing is bending and reinforcing the corners and stuff like this uh, with bending and just in case I wasn't clear on how to start and stop a row I thought I would show you again how to do a row now that it's bigger perhaps it'll be easier to see okay see how I started the row here on part of this reed I went almost all the way across so I'm going to bring this piece over top of that and I'm going to hide it behind this one because I want to hide it behind a reed and hide it hide this piece under the reed so I'm going to cut my reed here and finish this row up like this I do not like to start and stop on a corner I prefer to start and stop in the middle somewhere but that's okay it still works it just my preference is all okay so you can see that it's starting to take the shape of a basket and at, when it's on the table I can set it and kind of help reinforce the curves and corners and edges and stuff and you just want to take care that you're not flaring out too much because then your basket will flare out unless that's the look you're looking for and that's fine too um, so here we go my next row is uh, I'm going to start my decorative rows um, I'm going to do two rows of yellow and in between that I'm going to do a row of ribbon so I've got my yellow and you can dye your reed any way you want there's a thousand and one different ways you can use specific reed dye, you can use stain, uh, wood stain, you can use, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you could probably even use Kool-Aid, probably. Um, I haven't done that personally, but I'm sure you could. And so you just start it the same way, just make sure that you're front and back. See, I was starting on the uh, wrong side, can you see how fluffy that is versus this side? I was starting it the wrong way, it's important to make sure that you start it the right way. And that's my dog. I'm sorry. She's got something stuck up her nose. That's just the way she is. I'm sorry. <laughs> so here we go. And we're going to do it the same way that we were doing it all along. Under, over, under, over. And you can use different size reeds and you can use different, um, any kind of material. Um, to do this, I'm going to bend my corner. There we go. 
and just keep weaving. Pull it down. So I'll go in the rows below and tuck edges and stuff if necessary. And we're almost done for as far as how we're going to go. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so we're going to do um, a row of this, a row of ribbon, a row of this, and then two rows of this, and then we're going to go on to the edge. So I'm going to continue on um, just like we have been before, and I will show you once we get to the ribbon how we're going to do the ribbon. Now that we've got it to this point where we've got the decorative layer on, or not decorative layer, the decorative colored reed, I'm going to put on some ribbon. I got this ribbon at uh, Hobby Lobby and it's got cute little flowers and the center of the flowers kind of matches the yellow in the uh, thing. So I'm, I took a length off that I know will be long enough and I'm going to decide which side of my basket I want to be the front. I think this will be the front. Um, I know that this is the middle one, so I'm going to try to come up and over the same spot. So this is the middle one and I want this to be the front, so I'm going to go to the back side and start. Find the middle of the ribbon, the middle reed, is this one? Mm -hmm. Um, this will be an under, because we're going to stay in pattern, and we're just going to pull the ribbon through. And we're going to treat the ribbon as though it's a reed, except for tying it in the front. And I'm not too worried about how it looks right now, because I can straighten it out and fluff it up and all that later. I, although I do want my uh, wire, there's wire in this ribbon, to kind of fold inside. So why don't we just do this, fold it inside to start with, and then work with it. There we go. And that's how we're going to add the ribbon starting from the center of the back side of the basket. And head to the front. And all we're going to do on the front is tie a knot. We're not going to try to make a pretty bow or anything right now. Because that would kind of be silly. We'll worry about pretty at the end. So using the whole same under over weaving, I'm just going to take this to the front, do the other side, then tie your knot. And that that knot is just to hold it in place. It's not to be special yet. I've also used this technique to make um, basket handles where I've used one of these as one of the uprights and then gone across with a ribbon and it looks pretty cool. Okay, okay so now we're at the start and we're going to pull it through and hold it on this side. And the next one, when we come through, we're going to pull it through and hold it on this side, then tie our knot. And then we can go with the yellow again, or the yellow reed again.
previous rows as necessary just to kind of keep them even. Just make sure when you're doing this you're using a ribbon that you've tested and are sure that it's color fast so when it gets wet it's not going to run, the color's not going to run because that would kind of stink. All that work and then have the ribbon um, run. See, now we've got this and we can just tie a knot so it doesn't slide around. And then that's out of the way for now. And now we go back to um, using the reed. Let's see, we're going to start, I think I'd like to start here. So we're going to go over this one just like we did before. Um, so that our Our reed is going to start right here, just like before. So I'll just go around just like you were before, and then you do that all the way. So after this row, I'm going to do two of the plain reed. I'm going to do two of this reed um, because the next row will be, or after that, eventually will be the. Eh, maybe I will do three. Yeah, I'll do three more rows of this, and um, I'll come back and show you what the next step is. Okay. All right. See you in a minute. Okay. So I think. Okay. So <coughs> we're at this point where we've got the last piece on that we need, and I started moving on to the last, the last step, or not one of the last steps before I realized I really had a videotape. <laughs> all right. So what you do is you take all the pieces that are on the outside of the basket of this top reed and we're going to fold those in and catch them um, so that they fold over and hold this rim, this part on. It's not the rim but it's close to it so I've already started it a little bit so that you know I could in the interest of time. We'll say I did it on end purpose. Alright so what you do is you fold these in you have to m make sure that they're still damp. You fold these in and you measure it against the one that you're going to tuck it under. You put a mark on one side and a mark on the other side so that you know where to cut. I don't need you to spray it, Eric. And then you mark it here and here. Just all the ones that are on the outside of the basket, not the ones that are the inside. We'll work with those next, but not right now. So I don't know. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be tucking it under the yellow one, so marking it, marking it, marking it. So I'm marking there and there, both sides. Let me see if I have another one that I can mark that I can show you. Or I can just show you what I did. So I folded it in like that. And I marked it because it's going to go underneath the yellow one. I marked it on that side and that side so that I, could, I know where to cut. I want to cut it a slant, so that's why I did it this way. And I'm just going to cut each of those that I marked along the uh, line that I made. Then, while it's still damp, you're going you're gonna to fold it over trying to do this from an angle. You're going to fold it over and tuck it underneath that um, yellow one. If you have to, use something to lift it up. Okay. Tuck it underneath. Tuck it underneath that one. Just keep pushing until it's nicely tucked. You see what I'm doing? I'm tucking it underneath that one, nice and straight. Okay, and do that on for all the outside ones. None of the inside ones. You see how this one is coming from the inside, and the one that I was working with was on the outside? That's important. 
because the next step, once you go all the way around and do all those, the next step is going to be um, to put a lashing row on the inside. So I'm going to take, in this case, I don't mind it being the yellow one, so I'm going to take it, line it up behind one of them, it doesn't really matter. And we can either do all of these, and I prefer that for strength, or we can just do every other one and then trim the rest of them. I prefer to do them all just because I like to be, um, I, I prefer it to be as strong as possible. And because it doesn't matter, I'm just going to make sure that the brightest color, brightest of the sides of my reed is sticking up. Do it that way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go all the way to the side. And actually, I'll start in the middle because I prefer that. All right. So this one we're not going to worry about yet, but the next one we're going to do, we're going to fold it over that carefully and see how this row is the next one that it can tuck under right here that's the one we're going to can you see that um, we're going to mark here and mark here so it's not going to be as long and it's just going to tuck underneath this next row and we are going to if it won't tuck, you can lift it with a butter knife or a um, screwdriver or whatever, whatever tool you happen to have. Lay your hands. There we go. And that will hold that piece on and that's going to give you some strength um, and a platform for wrapping when you do your lashing lane or lashing um, the rim on so just keep going around and doing the same thing you're marking it um, so that it'll fit underneath that next row you're cutting it and then you're tucking it all the way around and that will be I'll start I'll stop the video and then when I start it again we'll we will have done all of that all the way around and I will start it again when we're at this point so I'll have this one left okay see you in a minute okay so now that we've gotten all the lash uh, the um, insides are holding down this foundation row and the outsides have been pulled in um, you could also do it where the inside and the outside hold down this row, but I kind of wanted the spacing here so that I can put in some seagrass. So if you don't mind a, a thinner space, you can do it that way. But I wanted the extra space for the seagrass to kind of nestle into. So, okay. Um, the next step is going to be uh, to put your rim on. The rim let me shake off this. The rim is made with this um, ha uh, let's see, half inch, half inch wide, half round reed. And we're going to start it. We're going to make sure the prettiest part is at the front. And the front is where my bow is. And the rest of it is in the back. So I'm going to kind of kind of decide how much I need. And I'm going to decide on a little bit more than I actually need. And I'm going to cut my piece of reed down to that. It's a little bit more than I need. And that and that. Okay. I'm having a little bit less to work with. Well, hopefully. Wee! And I will slap my son. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Alright, so we're going to pin that in place. We're going to mark where the corner is with a exacto, 
and we're going to come in at a slight angle and notch the um, notch a corner out and that will help in um, turning this corner okay so now we've got the corner notched and turned so it makes a nice tight corner and we can put another pin close pin there and we're going to do this all four corners just kind of pay attention to where your corner is work on a surface that either you don't mind getting cut or a um, cutting board would be fine and you're not going all the way through it you're just making a little a little notch right here for the um, for the corner to turn because when you turn your corner it helps it fold a little bit so that you've got a nice corner I'm going to do that two more times and then we'll move on to the next step I won't even bother stopping the video I'll just go just keep going okay so we're at this point now where we've got all four corners notched um, so that we know how big it needs to be and where it needs to be I've taken um, a pencil and I've marked where it overlaps because we're going to notch this out so that these two pieces fit together so it's only one thickness because I don't want a whole lot of bulk in this. So um, I've marked how you know how long the pieces are so that they'll match up. On the top one, the one that's furthest out, we're going to notch out and take out the bottom, or the back side of the reed. On the one that's on the inside, we're going to notch out and take out material from the top of the reed, the rounded part. So we're going to do that right now while it's still somewhat moist from being sprayed. And what we're going to do, make sure we're on the right side here, we are going to take our exactos, find the mark, roll the reed, and cut down. We're going to cut down mm, an eighth of an inch or so. Check it. Cut down again until we until we've cut down about half the thickness of the reed. Then, uh, once we're make sure we've cut a nice even line, we're going to start removing material. Cut away from you. Up to your pencil line. You can use the pencil line as a guide. You can even put a little notch in there and peel it if you have to. So don't cut it against your finger. Be safe about this. Okay? And now, just a couple more. It takes a little while to get this part, um, this part of the process, um, down because you're working with a sharp blade and you really don't want to cut your fingers off. Okay, so now we've cut the bottom like that. I don't know if you can see it, where it's got the notch. We're going to do the opposite thing on the other piece and then we're going to fit them together. See, because right now, close but no, close but not quite. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but on the bottom. We're going to find our line. And cut 
straight in. I hope you can see that part before. If not, you cut straight in up to your line where you've marked it about halfway through. And just keep pressing in with your exacto. If you didn't see the first part, this you know, if I wasn't in frame, you should be able to see it this time. Push in. Work sideways a little bit. And cut it straight across. You may have to do that a couple times just to be sure that you're halfway through. Don't cut towards yourself. And it takes a little bit to get um, the hang of doing that sometimes. Some people get it right away, some people don't. I'm one of those that didn't. It took a little while of practicing before I could get it. So now these two fit like this. You see where it doesn't match up there? We're going to cut a little bit more out of this one, out of the bottom one, just to make sure that it fits. So And that should fit. Oops, got the floof right there. Pull that off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to be as close as possible. So there you go. So now it fits, see? Now we're going to um, put it back on the basket. Line it all up. Get our those pins back onto it. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Line those up. We'll just pin the snot out of it. So that nothing moves. And everything is nice and tight here. There we go. And because there's not a whole lot of bulk there, it should stay pretty close, but uh, pretty still. The next step is going to be taking some seagrass. And what we're going to do with this is kind of hide the middle row here. I don't like the end of that, so I'm just going to cut it off. And we're going to lay that in. And that's going to kind of hide the middle row a little bit. It's not going to do 100%, but it's going to hide it some. And all you do as you're going, you're going to lay this in as you're lashing it. Now the lashing, you can do several things. You can use seagrass, you can use, um, gosh, you can use just about anything. You can use ribbon, you can use whatever you happen to have. I've got um, some thinner reed that's yellow, and I'm going to use that. And to do this, this one is um, oval, so it's flat on one side and round on another. You're going to take it with the end of it sticking out towards you. Put it in oops, in and up so that it comes up through here. See it? Then you're going to take it through, loop over the seagrass, and push it back down again so that it goes like that. See? Now you've got it sticking out just a tiny little bit, but you're going to be pulling this one, this long one, up and over, catching that one and holding it in place. See? 
So now what you're going to do is uh, wrap it up and over and go through the next hole in the bottom. Up and over, go through the next hole in the bottom. And just keep going this way. So make sure you've got it flat. Now if it was tighter, you'd probably need a lashing tool, um, it, but because it's not so tight, we don't really need to worry about it right now. But if I were to have done it tighter, this is just a very loose weave, so it really doesn't matter. You can always, I mean, you've got the room to do it with, um, to twist it so that it's not twisted up, to untwist a kinked up one and you just keep going just like this all the way around and it will hold those two together slide them a little bit closer if you need to you see and just keep making sure that your seagrass is here topping off the inside here of the um, basket and it's just going to hide some of the edges that I don't happen to like you could go without of course but I don't happen to like it. So anyway, this is um, just about the end of it. So what I'm going to continu continue to do is lash and uh, I'll continue going around and around just the same way. And twist that. And you can be more careful about how the lashing is going so that it um, is nice and neat. And we're almost done. So I'm going to continue going around lashing this and I might go this way and then go back the other way. I don't know. We'll see. But um, if I do go back the other way, it's just a matter of going back the other way um, so that you have X's at the top, you know because this will cross over this way, and this will cross over this way, and this will cross over once you go back the other way. So, but that's totally up to you. To you. So, um, I'm going to continue this way, and I'll show you how to finish it off. How to finish off the lashing row. And, um, that'll be pretty much it. And I'll show you the end result in the next part. Okay, so now we're done. Um, I've lashed all the way around, and I took this piece, which is the very end of the lashing. I decided not to do with the X's, so I think it looks cute just the way it is. Um, and see the how this worked. Um, so I took it and I tucked it underneath the yellow here and pulled it tight. And now all I got to do is clip it. I could even go around one more time if I wanted to, but well, I guess I'll go ahead and show you how I tucked it in there. So basically, I just worked until it came, worked it until it came through. Pull it down tight. Emma! Pull it down tight. Really, really tight. Ah, and then it's locked in place. So now all i got to do is trim that off. And I'll just use the scissors. Emma. There we go. Locked in tight. And Emma! All i got to do is tie my bow and I'm all set. And then my basket is finished. And I know it seems like a lot of steps, but only it's because I was stopping and showing and all this because I wanted you to understand um, what I was doing and why. But that's that's how um, that's how I made my basket. So I'm going to trim off the ends of the bow with the. Um, with the what's it called? The um, oh, I've got a trimmer that's like a heat trimmer for bows, so that it doesn't un doesn't unravel. But that's what I'm going to do for here and here. But my basket's finished. It's ready to go. All I got to do is dry it, and I'll dry it with something on the bottom so that the bottom is flat, and it's all done. All done except for the drying. So. That's how I make my baskets, and I hope you enjoyed watching it and seeing it. And 
Of course, you can do it tighter, you can do it looser, I guess, but I don't know how it would hold much, but that's how I do it, and um, hope you liked it. Bye.